All right, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, still a couple of minutes before we begin our service. Just want to remind you, uh, if you didn't know, Brother Zach has, has tested positive, and he's going to be quarantined. He's doing fine, still under the weather a little bit, obviously, so we need to pray for him and looking forward to a great day with you today. Uh, because of that, we will be canceling the extended worship that would happen in the, in the Family Life Center tonight. So we'll set that for a different time. But uh, y'all pray for him and his family that they'll be back with us. All right, let's do that. Pray earnestly. Let's pray for that. Father, we do thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for this time together. Lord, we just ask you to bless Brother Zach and his family. Watch over them, protect them, pray for a fast healing for them. And I just pray that you would hold them up. Lord, I know they'll be watching us today as many will be online, and I just pray that your presence would be in this place. God, we just ask you to rain down on us. Give us your glory. Let, let, let us just exalt your name in this place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good to see you this morning, and it's just a great time to be with you. Y'all don't seem very happy this morning. Let's all smile. It's better to be glad than mad, okay? Keep that in mind, lift up the Lord. 
All right. We have great victory in Jesus. Amen. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his glory Of his precious blood so holy Then I repented of my sin And won the through anything. Let's sing together. The splendor of the King clothed in majesty let all the earth all the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God!
and age to wait she stands time is in his hands beginning and end beginning and end the God It's a joy to have your presence in this place. We thank you for this time together. Lord, I ask you to bless Brother Tracy as he comes at this time and use him in a powerful way. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. You know, there was a family headed home from church the other day when the and as they were going home, the mom had to turn around to her son in the back and say to him, when the pastor, when the pastor asks you what the sermon was about, please don't say about three hours too long, okay? <laughs> now, I can tell you tonight or today that we're not going to be here for three hours. We've kind of kept this a little bit short than that because this is our what we're calling family in worship today because we've got our children in here from our first through fourth grade that are normally in children's worship. So they're in here today. So they're with their parents today. And so uh, what we've got going on is that they're going to uh, participate with us today. And of course, you and I know that, that um, the mind can remember only what the seat can endure, okay? And you know, these little seats sometimes get a little, a little moody and, and anxious and things like that, a little squirmy. So we're going to keep it short and sweet and to the point. And, but I'm also hoping that they can learn some things from you today. You know, they can learn how to worship and um, sing the songs of praises, that they can also learn how to 
behave, behave in, in church, and hopefully from some of y'all, they won't learn how to take a nap during church. That's what we do not want them to learn today. But today is the Lord's Supper, and we are focusing upon that. As a church body and as believers, we normally uh, we focus on two specific ordinances um, as bodies of believers. One is baptism, and we focus upon that. Uh, when you become a Christian, we want you to be baptized after that. We are commanded to do that. Now, we know that baptism does not save us, but it is part of, of becoming a Christian and helping everyone else to know that I am a believer, therefore I identify with those of the local body, and I identify with others that are Christians. And I do that publicly right up there. But the second thing we also do is that we partake, partake in the Lord's Supper. And we are asked to do that as a church body together to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And so today, that's what we're focusing on. We're focusing upon the Lord's Supper. And Jesus is inviting us to come to the come to the table now in order to participate in the Lord's Supper you must be a believer first you must have put your faith or made a profession of faith in Christ but today we're going to look at some different scriptures that are going to help us prepare our hearts and um, and and prepare us before we take the Lord's Supper now it's a serious thing to take the Lord's Supper in a careless manner the church at Corinth was going through a lot of problems. They were abusing the Lord's Supper. They were not taking it seriously. And so Paul had to come to them and he had to talk to them. He had to instruct them and teach them um, why it is so important to honor this and to, to um, take it seriously. And so if you want to turn in your Bibles over to 1 Corinthians chapter, don't stand because we're going to do a lot of different verses here. So I don't want you looking like a ping pong ball bouncing up and down or something like that. We'll look at some different verses here that kind of help us to set the stage as we prepare today to take the Lord's Supper. So the first thing, like I said, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, you can go ahead and go to verses 27 and 28 and just hold it right there. The first thing that we've got to do before we partake in the Lord's Supper is that we need to come clean. Before we can sit at the table, we need to be clean. Now, when you go outside and when you work in the garden, when you work in the, the field or you go to your garage or something at work and you go and you get all dirty and greasy and grimy and you've got mud all over you and all of that, surely you don't come in and sit at the table being all filthy and dirty and start eating fried with your hands. You know, that's just not going to taste good. Because you're getting all of that stuff all over your fried chicken or your rolls or things like that. You need to clean up. You need to wash up. You need to get soap and water and, and clean off all of the dirt and all of the grime. And so when we come to the Lord's Supper, we need to be prepared to be clean. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 28 says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread... And drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself in this way. Let him eat the bread and drink from the cup. Now what is the nature, it asks, of this examination? Well, we're certainly to examine our hearts and see if there is any sin there. And we need to confess it before the communion. However, the context suggests that we are to examine our relationship with one another. For Paul goes on to say, For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. When Paul said that no one should take the Lord's Supper in, a worth, in an unworthy manner, he was speaking about the Corinthians who were basically rushing in and they were making this a... a um, love feasts they were eating more than they should and we'll kind of get to that but but they were going through the motions without really thinking about the significance of the lord's supper here of what they were being asked to do and so those who did so were guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of, of the lord and instead of honoring his sacrifice they were sharing in the guilt of those who crucified christ therefore you and i 
should prepare ourselves with healthy, healthy introspection, with confession of sin, and our differences with our brothers and sisters. If we have any there, we need to get those right before we can partake in the Lord's Supper. So we've got to come with clean hands and a clean heart. Second thing is this. We've also got to come with the right attitude. We've got to come with the right attitude. What would happen if you were invited to somebody's house and you know that they're going to serve steak and shrimp? You're going to get a baked potato. You're going to get all the fixings. You're going to get cheesecake and all this good stuff. And lo and behold, about an hour before you go to their house, you decide to munch down on a whole package of Cheetos, a box of Twinkies, and, and drink a liter of Coke. I mean, just, just think about that. You're putting all this sugar and all this junk food in you when you know you've got the good stuff coming. 1 Corinthians eleven thirty three and 34 says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, welcome one another. If anyone is hungry, he should eat at home, so that when you gather together, you will not come under judgment. You see, the problem at, with the Corinth at Corinth was that the people were coming to the communion table without a proper concern for one another. You see, prior to the, to the actual communion, they were having this giant love feast where they all came and they ate together. But there was something really unloving in an unloving manner that was happening at this big meal. And the problem was this. Instead of sharing their resources, the wealthy people would bring the best of their stuff. They would bring the filet mignon steaks while the poor people were having to eat hamburger helper. That's what was happening. So they weren't sharing with each other. They were keeping what they had because they earned it and they were having to, to have what they had over here. And Paul was telling them, this is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. This is not what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. This is a family meal. When you sit down together, it's a family that comes together to to sit together and to have the meal. And the Lord desires that his children love one another and care for one another. You see, it is impossible for a true Christian to get closer to the Lord while at the same time he is separated from his fellow believers. So when we come to the table, we come with an attitude of gratitude for that fellowship, sharing with each other, and also to remember why we're there. Now, also, when we're dining, we need to enjoy that moment. When we come together, we need to enjoy the moment. You know, I've heard it said, I've, I've read it somewhere, that the chairs at McDonald's and Burger King and Taco Bell and other fast food places are really designed to not be comfortable because they don't want you to stay there. They want you to order, they want you to come, they want you to eat, and they want you to get out of there because they want to have more people coming in coming in and so they'd really designed those chairs to not be very comfortable it's totally different over in europe if you go to europe they want you to come they want you to eat they want you to say they want you to sit and relax and enjoy the company and enjoy the time together they want you to enjoy the moment folks when we partake in the lord's supper we need to savor that moment we need to come together and enjoy it, not be in a haste to get it done, but we need to take time to reflect and to remember. Back over in chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, verse 16 says this, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? When we come to the Lord's table, our spiritual meal should be to focus on why we are here. But we not only need to enjoy the moment, but we also need to be in harmony at that table. Look right under that at verse 17. Because he goes on to say, Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, since all of us share the one bread. Folks, sometimes there's conflict, there's disharmony, there's tension that can arise that can always ruin a perfectly good meal. I don't know, but maybe it's happened at your house before. You put down a good meal and everything is going well at the beginning and then sooner or later, conversation begins to go toward politics, it goes toward work, it goes toward problems in family and it, 
It just goes south, doesn't it? It's become a problem, and that one loaf of bread that we're talking about here that you thought would be one together starts to get divided apart and even gets thrown at each other because that's what happens when we get in disharmony and we get in discord. One thing we should not bring to the table is divisiveness. We might all get along. We might all totally agree with everything that's done with worship and preaching and the ministries and Sunday school and all of that. But what we need to agree on is our unity in Christ because that's what unites us. Also, when we come together, we need to remember the sacrifice that Christ gave. Turn back to Corinthians 11 and look at verses 23 through 26. <clears throat> On the same night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the bread. And when he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant of, in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In eating this bread and drinking the cup, we are called to remember Jesus, and in particular, we are to remember his death. For the death is the key to his life. And if we want to understand Jesus, we must understand the cross. You see, our Lord Jesus made it easy for us, very easy, but yet it, it, it's very profound how we do this. Because eating the elements help us to appreciate the fact that Christ is really within us. And eating that together reminds us of our unity with our brothers and sisters in Christ, in this body we call the church. And it's a memorial of the salvation that he accomplished by his death and resurrection. And so we should appreciate the sacrifice of our Savior. Otherwise, otherwise we're missing the whole point of the meal and, and why we are coming together. Lastly, we need to anticipate heaven. We need to come to anticipate heaven. At the Last Supper in Matthew 26, verse 29, Jesus takes the cup of wine and tells his disciples, But I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I give it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus has in mind here the Jewish picture of the kingdom of God as a party. Now, parties are great fun. We love parties. We love to go to parties. But the implication here is that, is that the place where Jesus is going to prepare for us is going to be the best party ever. The table that we come to is the invitation to come to that party. It encourages us to anticipate the time when Jesus will come again and when we will sit down and we will eat with him. And what a great day that will be because we have so much to look forward to because Jesus, he died and he rose again. And the Christian hope in heaven for us, it's not just wishful thinking. It is based on the victory that Christ gained over death on the cross. So when Paul tells us whenever you eat this bread and whenever you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And so, as we've looked at the Lord's Supper, and he's inviting us to come and be a part of that, here's the last part of that, and that is the invitation. Boys and girls that are here, uh, folks, that might be your first time or something, in our service, we give an invitation at the end of the service. And there's a reason why we do that. Because we want to give you the opportunity and we want to give you the chance to respond to maybe what God has done for you today. We want to give you that opportunity to respond to that call in your life that maybe uh, God has spoken to you in a very special way. You see, today, what I've done here today is that I've talked about the sacrifice of Jesus' life 
that he gave for each and every one of us. His body that was broken and the blood that was shed, his sacrifice was done out of love for you and and for me. God willingly allowed his one and only son to die on the cross for your sins. And what is our sins, you might ask? Well, it's what we do in thought, in word, and deed that does not please God. And it's because of our sin that separates us from God, and it will lead us to eternal separation and spiritual death. But here's the good news. There's always good news with Christ. God offers us a free gift, and that free gift is eternal life. Now, he doesn't force it upon you. There's nothing you can do to earn it. There's no, there's no way you can buy it. It is a free gift. His son, Jesus Christ, paid the price on the cross for you so that you can have eternal life. He died for you and you and you and you. He died for your sin on that cross. But here's the thing about it. You've got to accept that free gift. You know what Christmas is like, don't you? There's a lot of gifts underneath that tree. Some of them even have your name on it. They're all given to you out of love. But if you never accept that gift, it just sits under that tree. It's a free gift. Jesus paid the price for you on that cross, on Calvary, for your sin. And when you accept his free gift and ask Jesus to come into your heart, guess what? He does that. He is true to his word, and that is what we call faith. We have faith in Jesus Christ that now he lives in me, and I will live for him, and because of my faith in him, I have eternal life with Christ in heaven. And so... That is his invitation to you today. My question to you is, will you accept that invitation? Will you invite Jesus into your heart? Now, I have one more invitation that I need to give out also. And this was, is an invitation now before we receive the Lord's Supper later. My invitation to you is, is there anything in your heart Is there anything in your life that you need to get right before we have the Lord's Supper? Is there anything that you need to confess, anything that you need to pray up or pray over so that when you take the elements later on after the invitation that you can do it with a clean heart and clean hands? So I'm going to ask you during the invitation time that maybe you need to come forward and maybe you just need to pray here at the front or maybe you need to pray where you are. But you need to pray to get your heart right as a believer before we partake of the Lord's Supper. So let's pray at this time. Father, I thank you for this time that we've had here together. Just looking at the Lord's Supper, the importance of it, the difference that it makes in our life, and why we should come and remember that death, burial, and resurrection. Father, that's such an important thing. But Father, before any of us can't even partake of that. If anyone here is not a believer, Father, they need to settle that first. If there's anyone here that needs to invite you into their life, Father, I pray that today they will say yes to you. Father, I pray that I've made it clear enough for them to know how much God loves them, to know that the wages of our sin is death, But yet the gift of God is eternal life. And God loves us so much that he doesn't want anyone to perish but to have everlasting life. And so if there's anyone here today that has never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray that today, whether it's children, youth, adult, I pray that you will leave here today knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you do not know that, I pray that you'll make that decision today. I'll be down here at the front, and I would love to talk with you about that. Bob will be here as well and others. 
who will be willing to share with you the love of Jesus Christ. So I invite you to do that. If there's others here that might want to join our church today, I invite you to come forward. The invitation is for you as well to come in and be a part of our church through a statement, through promise of letter. We invite you to come. But most of all, before we take the Lord's Supper, if you need to get anything right in your own life between you and God, that's not a hindrance there. We pray that you'll do that today. For this we pray in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen. If you'll all please stand as we go into our invitation time. I'll be down here at the front if anybody would like to come. Bob will be here as well. And we would love to talk with you about that decision. I hear the Savior say that indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all Thank you. If you'll all please be seated. I'm going to have uh, Bob come up and he's going to talk about what's been going on here. Yeah, you can use that microphone and, and these students that are making the decisions today. Here, y'all can come on up here. Yeah, they're going to look at you. It's okay. So uh, a couple weeks ago uh, at the end of one of our Wednesday night lessons, um, I hadn't planned on it, but uh, God kind of led me into um, a prayer about salvation and, and, and going through it, and uh, we had to do some scheduling, but uh, Braley and Alex are here be because of that, and they're uh, professing their salvation in Jesus Christ to be baptized. Uh, Peyton. Peyton Bohannon here, he got uh, saved a couple weeks ago elsewhere, but he's been coming with us uh, here recently, and he wants to be baptized because of his salvation. <coughs> and uh, Cadence Lemoyne has been saved, but she hasn't been baptized, and so she wants to get baptized, and uh, they're all scheduled to get dipped at the end of February, so... So much y'all can sit back down and um, and we are so and I'm going to assume by the applause for each one of them that that is your confirmation and your acceptance of them as part of the body and part of the believers 
Like I said earlier, baptism doesn't save you. That's the salvation there of accepting Christ. But we do want to follow up in baptism as that outward obedience to Christ. Okay, uh, we're going to partake in the, in the Lord's Supper now, and I hope all of you have a communion cup. If not, um, our deacons are, are around, and here's a, uh, they will be glad to pass you a plate. Todd, uh, Robert, uh, there are some others in the back that might have some they can bring. So if you do not have one, and if you're a believer in Christ, if you've been saved and you know it, and there's nothing wrong with not taking it, okay? We do not want you to do it. Uh, just because everybody else is doing it, that is not what we want you to do. Do not feel bad about that. But this is for the believers in the body to, to be a part of this. So if you did not get a cup when you came in, if you would raise your hand, the guys can get to you. Does anybody need one over here? Okay, I hope everyone's got one. As I've talked about today, this is a very important part, a very uh, memorial part of our Lord's uh, command to us to respond to him as often as we shall eat and drink of this. And so let me remind you of one of the scriptures. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26 says, And on the same night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you to do this in remembrance of me. If you'll please pull off that first little piece of plastic up there, you should be able to get to the wafer underneath that. Brother Todd Bird, would you offer our prayer for the bread? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for this holy ordinance. And as we partake of this bread, just help us remember, dear Lord, the body of Christ and what Jesus went through on the cross out of grace, love, and mercy so that we might have a way to you and uh, we might have hope. We just help us never take this for granted and just help us to be humble and help us to be thankful for this uh, perfect sacrifice that was done on our behalf. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Take your knee. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Brother Robert Lane, will you offer a prayer for the cup? Oh God, we praise you for your amazing love for us that you made so clear that you proved at the cross of your son, Jesus Christ. We know this cup represents his blood that was shed for us. And we know from your word without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. We know that it's only through the blood of your perfect son that we find forgiveness and eternal life in you. You know, as we think about the horrors of his crucifixion, help us to get a glimpse of your extravagant love for us. And now we say, worthy oh, you are you, O oh God, and worthy is the Lamb to receive power and honor and blessing. For well, with your blood, you purchased people of every tribe and tongue and nation. Worthy are you, O oh God, of all our praise. In your Son's name I pray. Amen. If you'll pull back the next part and drink.
Let me also give you one more announcement before Brother Clay Hightower comes up and to close us out in prayer. Our women's ministry group, led up by his wife, Lauren Hightower, and a group of ladies, um, have a fundraiser going on, and it's chocolate-dipped strawberries. If you would like to buy some chocolate-dipped strawberries, I believe it's a dozen for 20 bucks. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. We would love for you to do that. Go out there and sign up. The money that they're collecting there will go towards some future ministry opportunities and projects and things that they've got planned to do. So we look forward to that. So uh, we are so grateful for you all to come, to be here today. Thank you for the service of you all's participation. I hope the kids were good. I think I didn't see any problems anywhere. I think everything went well. If you will all please stand and Brother Clay close us out. Tracy, thank you for doing that so I didn't have to do the plug for my wife's. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you now just giving you thanks for your grace, love, and mercy. Just thank you for each individual that's here this morning to hear your word, Lord. Uh, we do thank you for the blood. We thank you for uh, the breaking of the bread and uh, that opportunity for salvation, the free gift for eternal life with you. We just ask that we go out this week and show love to each and every person we come in contact with, that they might see the light of Jesus Christ in our lives and make a difference and plant that seed for their salvation. Just uh, thank you for this place. Thank you for this people. We love you and praise you.